All right, back in <clears throat> the live streaming studio setup. Things are looking good. I just need to build up, uh, you know, people. We got to get a crowd in here. We got to work on that. Right now, I got a handful, but, uh, you know, I know there's more of you out there. So, <clears throat> what I was thinking we could do is we could start things off by watching the uh, Dodge EV reveal because I was really curious about that. I don't know about any of you, but I've actually been interested in that. And that's coming from someone who I haven't owned a, a Mopar, any Dodge product, but at the same time, like, I knew they were going to do something a little bit different when it came to the EV game because, let's be honest, their customer base is so intrinsically linked to, like, I gotta be the <clears throat> loud, obnoxious, like, muscle car, whatever thing. And that's fun. Like, in its own way, it's absolutely fun. But it meant you had a lot of people out there who were going to be disappointed no matter what happened because they just hate the idea of EVs. <clears throat> I think giving it an opportunity, though, to uh, you know stand on its own, see what they could do with it. I was very curious to see. So, uh, yeah, I pulled up the video that I think has the reveal on it. But uh, anyway... While I wait for more people to get in here, you guys can go ahead and throw some video links in the chat if you want me to check some stuff out. Remember, today is a whatever Wednesday, which means that we're not just focused on detailing, we're not just focused on <clears throat> anything too particular. It's more loosey-goosey, it's kind of go with the flow. Whatever you feel like showing, whatever you feel like sharing, and I'll watch the stuff that I feel like watching. So, um... Uh, I mean, that both narrows the scope and broadens it a little bit. Anyway, let's go ahead and get things rolling here. I'm going to go ahead and pause it momentarily. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Alex Dewar mentioned you in his story. Oh, I'm adding that. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. I should have made a story post. Oh, there's somebody getting mowed down by a Camaro in a takeover situation. Crazy how that happens. <clears throat> Don't worry, I'm sure Dodge EVs will be doing that in the not-too-distant future. The difference is, well, I was going to say you wouldn't hear them coming, but from what I understand, the new Dodge EV does have a sound associated with it, so that's going to be very interesting. What sound? What sound will it make? Like... EVs that I can think of off the top of my head that have sounds, they're usually pretty subdued. The The one that comes readily to mind is the, uh, <clears throat> I guess, the sport sound that the, the Porsche Taycan does, or Taycan if you're uncultured and don't know how to pronounce it. Um, yeah, sorry, that was a really judgy way of saying that, but yeah. <laughs> The Taycan definitely has, like, a sound that it makes distinctly. Uh, it's it's kind of a Jetsons car sound. It's kind of a ooh, you know, kind of thing. But other other EVs have been making sounds as well. And not just, like, the, the mandated exterior sound to make sure that, like, you know, deaf people can hear that there's an EV nearby. But uh, Roadrunner noise. It's just... <laughs> it's almost about to run you over, and that's when you hear, me, me. <laughs> By that point, it's too late. Um, <clears throat> let's kick it over. Got that. Okay. What's this link to? Oh, snap. I have watched that video before, but I will watch it again, Alex. That one is dope. I love that. Pull that up here. Yeah, that thing is nasty. All right. <clears throat> Saving that one. Uh, Ricky Bobby, I'm on fire. Put me out with you. <laughs> put, don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Put me out with your... What? what witch magic? Voodoo magic? I can't even think. I'm just... Bleh, brain's fried. It's been a long day. Anyway, let's start things off with the Dodge EV reveal. Volkswagen for life. That's right, Alex. I know you love yourself some dubs. <clears throat> and that particular one you posted is just about the most badass one I've ever seen. So I, I know that one's sick. Uh, all right. We got five people in here. I feel like now, now we got it rolling. I can kick it over to my React view. Let's do that. Wabam. Okay. Now... We see a crowd outside. This is basically, I think, a shortened clip 
pulled out of the live stream that Dodge did. And <clears throat> don't misunderstand me. I am by no means a Mopar fanboy. Like, I, I have no dog in that fight. It's just not, you know, some people are like, live, breathe Mopar and like more power to him. That's fun. I, I'm always kind of amused. I'm going to say something a little controversial here, but I see definitely that like when it comes to the American, you know, car companies, it seems like Mopar Dodge specifically, they're, they're going for a particular demographic. But what's fun is like when you look at the, the way that everybody treats their cars on the, on the receiving end where it's like they get them, they want to customize everything. The, the Dodge guys are like the Honda boys of the <clears throat> American car experience. I, I think that's fairly valid. I mean, Dodge and Chevy, don't get me wrong, they got their own stuff going on. But when it comes to just out and out, like, crazy wild mods, all that stuff, like visual things, graphics choices for cars, like, I feel like the Mopar people take that not one step beyond, but like 10 steps beyond where the others do. So yeah, I, I would say that's a pretty fair way of looking at it. Anyway, let's get this show on the road because that's enough of me talking. You guys want to watch the video too, I'm assuming. Oh, countdown? Okay, we got some dubstepy music. Moving, uh, moving, moving. Moving. Okay. <clears throat> Over a century ago, two rebels quit their day jobs and put their side hustle into motion. The Hellcat was out of the bag. American ingenuity took the wheel, and destiny would either break us or make us. Super Bs, Chargers, Challengers, and SRTs made us. Customization made us. Irreverence made us. Culture <laughs> made us. $1.2 million. Motor. Like, okay, out of the big three, I can just say right off the bat, like, we all understand that when it comes to the big three, Dodge and by association, you know, Chrysler and their associated brands are, you know, kind of usually third in line when it comes to out and out, like, sales popularity and all that stuff. Ford, I think, generally way up there but general motors is just massive they have so many different companies going on but it is interesting to uh you know see the way dodge approaches stuff in particular they understand that they're not the biggest kid on the block so they make up for what they lack in out and out sales volume and stuff by being i guess you know in terms of british slang a little cheeky so yeah, you can do a presentation where you literally have a guy driving your car, flipping off the, the camera, and that's cool, because when it comes to a lot of other car presentations, everything is so safe. Everything's got to be, like, very, you know, rigidly manufactured and stuff, but I can already tell, like, right off the bat, just with the Dodge stuff, it's fun. <laughs> it's, it's fun to see, because, I, I don't know, I, I feel like they, they feel like they have less to lose, but in a way, they have a lot to lose, so with the whole muscle car thing. It's just interesting watching like how they approach this EV stuff. So I haven't seen this presentation yet, but I'm already liking it because it's already got kind of like, eh, dude flipping off the camera vibes. I'm wondering if they're going to have any other cheeky stuff in there, or I wonder if they're going to keep it like really safe and they're just going to kind of toe the line. Cause they got a lot of stuff that they're going to be apologizing for or whatever, just by coming out with an EV that's already like squarely against a lot of Dodge's target demographic for, the muscle car stuff, but they're not idiots. They recognize that, and I'm just curious to see what they do with that information. Motor City made <clears throat> us. Now that the smoke has cleared, American ingenuity will make us all over again. Holy shit! <laughs> Wait, through, Dodge. All American muscle. It's gonna be a lot of murka going on in here. Performance made us. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Kaniskis. Welcome back to another day of action on Woodward. Look, I know what some of you are probably thinking right now. After a full week of performance, two reveals, race cars, a dozen buzz models, a new Hornet, a new segment. 
The Dodge guys are probably going to phone this one in on the final day, announce some limited edition sticker package. No way. Not how we roll. Today, we bring the noise. Today, we shock the entire system, and we outplay the game. But first, I need to start with some bad news. The harsh reality. No one wants cars anymore. Brands are turning everything and anything into a UV. Trucks and SUVs <clears throat> outsell cars four to one. Now, to your point, uh, Tony there, Tonezors. Yeah, no, interested in the Hornet RT. Yeah, because it's like a plug-in hybrid. Weirdly, they went with a smaller engine for the higher performance model, but it reminds me a lot of like when you get to certain cars where they have like a naturally aspirated like 2.4 liter four cylinder and then you get the higher performance variant, they drop it down to two liters, but they turbocharge it, that kind of thing. With the Hornet, it looks like, I mean, it's bringing all wheel drive to the table. It's got a lot of different things. And I imagine a lot of that has to do with the, you know, platform sharing with the Alfa Romeo, I want to say Tonali, or I call it toenail. We'll just call it the toenail because that's what it looks like a weird-ass spelling of when you <laughs> look at the car listing. But no, Dodge is coming out with their own version of that that platform and calling it the Hornet, which obviously has some like connotations of pulling from their history, which a lot of people just be like, oh, here we go, bastardizing history again, when Mitsubishi did it with the Eclipse and called it the Eclipse Cross, and it was like a shitty little you know CUV. And now they've got the Hornet, which is now a little CUV. But I appreciate they're actually trying to do something a little different with it. They're trying to pop in a little more performance. So it's interesting. And <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I like, I really like, I'm a huge fan of like plug-in hybrids. Um, apart from any warranty, you know, disappearing and repair nightmares down the road when you have a vehicle that's equally complex as an EV and as a you know, ice engine, that, that's an interesting thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I like plug-in hybrids. I'm, I'm a big proponent for those. And I think as much as people are afraid that EVs are going to like take over everything and all the ice cars are going to be gone, I think you're going to see more plug-in hybrids, you know, in certain areas where it makes sense, where they're trying to meet emission standards, but also still work with the existing stuff that they got. I, I think there's going to be some, some overlap there. I don't see full EV adoption or hydrogen or wherever else things end up going, I don't see the internal combustion fully going away, realistically. I, I just don't see it disappearing 100%. Will it go away in most of the visible ways? Okay, probably to some degree, but I think there's always going to be some around, uh, whether it's enthusiasts with like, you know, these synthetic fuels that they've been working on and stuff. Some of that stuff may be, you know, vaporware or pipe drains and stuff, but it's you know, it's worth pursuing, seeing if you could do that. But if anybody were to ask me, I, I'm a very strong proponent of climate change is real. We're dealing with it. And, uh, well, we're not dealing with it well enough. But at the same time, I'm also a car nut, so I always have those two things battling in my head. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can understand and appreciate both realities and find a way to compromise in a way that doesn't make you feel shitty at the end of the day. There's options out there. So... I'm just hoping we can continue to evolve. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I've got, it's weird, it's sporty, sportyish, and the 30 minute, 30 mile EV range would actually handle 90% of my typical driving. Yeah, no, Tony, that's that's exactly like, it would be an awesome little family car. Like, that's how my C Max was. And my C Max is not an exciting car, but it was shockingly quick for what it was. Like, it was way faster than it needed to be. It was as fast as like a Focus ST it felt like sometimes. Probably wasn't, but it felt like it. Um, down here, Dane, first time stopping by your stream. Nice to finally get a chance to stop by. Hey, thanks, Mod Hatter. I appreciate that. Bucky throwing another link in the comments. We'll keep this rolling, and I'm going to pull that uh, video up, put it on the back burner here. Okay, I said it. After years of UBs being for kayakers and people that make their own trail mix, Today, that kind of, of course, that's right at the target audience. <laughs> now, it was a slow transition because manufacturers' development cycles, they're extremely expensive and they can't change as fast as consumer tastes. But when it flipped, it flipped fast. And you saw it yesterday. It took Dodge years to enter the massive compact UV segment. And the response was exactly what we expected. Some of you were pissed. Some of you think we sold out. Well, I guess it depends.
depends on your definition of sold out. Because since 8 a.m. this morning... I mean, I'll be honest, I don't envy Dodge's position in this whole thing because they've set themselves up to be a particular thing in many people's minds. And they were occupying a niche that, I mean, frankly, they were the most successful at it. Uh, outside of, like, the Mustang, you're not seeing much in the way of pony cars, muscle cars, outside of what Mopar has to offer. So, yeah, the Camaro exists, but the Corvette's gone off in a whole, you know, much more elevated direction now. I, I think that their uh, client base has uh, moved up a bit more into, like, maybe the, the Porsche buyer spectrum. But it's still a Corvette. It's more blue collar. But, yeah, it, it's different though when you're talking about like challengers and chargers and stuff like you see those things everywhere everywhere we received 14,000 orders oh there's your answer tony jeez in eight hours 14,000 orders you you truly represent a brotherhood that is embracing this expansion and we are a brotherhood i think this british chef need to learn embraced. from him dodge is the tattoo of the industry and it's still not for anybody, and we like it. But the ones that it is for, they don't all need a full sleeve. Everyone has to start out somewhere. But as you accurately pointed out to me through social media, despite the change in consumer demand, muscle cars have still maintained a very significant and lasting I feel place like to industry. appropriately prepare my body wow. for this event, oh, gotta be drinking a beer. By delivering emotional design, extreme performance and engaging driving granted experience. it's a mexican logger but it feels Most very murica right now so we'll just embrace out. it and dodge has defined that lane so everything's good right why are we talking about going digital because it's 1972 for big vh right now and the next trend that's building and it's building faster than uvs did is electrification <clears throat> now you can, and you will, call BS. Now, he's saying it's 1972. What he's saying without saying it is emissions controls and the gas crisis and all the things that we know happened right after that. But, you know, he's, he's implying it. But it is interesting to look at it. This is like the absolute heyday. And looking at it for what it is in terms of ICE engines, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of what you're left at. But it's interesting. <laughs> what they're going to do with this uh, position they find themselves in. That's not my prediction. And you would be right to call that into question. But what's impossible to ignore is the manufacturer's product pipeline. One look at the product plans, and it's clear that the auto industry is in a space race. And yeah, Dan, I, I like the, the Hornet, Mars. despite the name. No, uh, I think it's going to be a successful little vehicle, really whatever people think ridiculous. of it. Is it? When NASA put a man on the moon, it was a culmination of a decade of engineering and effort and buckets of government money that in today's dollars would be $280 billion. $280 billion to go to the moon, to step a foot, plant a flag, hit a golf ball, drive the lunar rover around, all that. And if that seems like a lot- Which if I'm not mistaken, GM was tied in with making the lunar rover. A lot of money, it was. And it paid off way beyond the tang and the Velcro that we got out of it. That engineering fueled American innovation for decades. Okay. Now imagine a number that's about twice that. 526 billion. That's how much the automotive industry has put into electrification. There is no mulligan on a half a trillion dollars. Golf reference. This party is happening. <laughs> We can sit at home and binge on streaming videos, or we can show up and dance like only Dodge can. Last year, at the I mean, don't get me wrong. Day, this is marketing, but at the, the same time, Dodge was gonna get into this game. there's a there's a lot of truth buried in the okay. We'll throw out a little catchphrase or a little like okay, warm them up a little bit. But no, like yes, he he's doing you know pitching and marketing in a sense, but they really do have themselves in a very interesting position. And that's the part that I just had me wanting to see this today, was to see how do they approach being what they are to so many people and adapt that into a world where most people don't see the muscle thing as being a thing at all. As if we raise the game, 
if electrification actually electrified the brand, if it made our cars quicker, altogether faster, and could amplify our performance character. If we did that, then we had an obligation to bring it to you. Alex, to I to doubt Elon market. watched. The problem was, we can never know. Alan, for us to do that, it needed to look like a Dodge, sound like a Dodge, and drive like a Dodge. But nothing like that existed. And most thought it couldn't be done. But you would be amazed how creative designers and engineers can get when they see the industry is planning a half a trillion dollar party and they don't have a ticket. Oh, nobody likes not being invited. I mean, for real. Oh, trigger warning for Dane? What am I about to click on? Oh, no. Somebody didn't like love. I well, yeah, I am going to be triggered by that, but I'll pull it up here. Since my ex-wife, Auntie Helen, left. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not watching that yet. <laughs> now, the product brief, I will say is simple. They won't. The product <laughs> brief was simple. Alex, sounds like you're saying Dadge. All I can think of when you say that is Brad Pitt in the movie Snatch. Do you like Degs? <laughs> Do you like Degs? First, reimagine the most iconic muscle car ever. Then oh make God, just a bunch of people posting L in the chat on the replay. <laughs> but make it look like it was chiseled out of granite. Package an EV powertrain that will outperform our current V8s. Yes, even our supercharged V8s. Oh, and wait, remember I said everyone wants UVs? So make it all weather capable with the utility of a big box store. A muscle car that can literally run the quarter mile, run to Costco, and outrun Darwin. Okay, I know that sounds damn near impossible, but we also knew it was 1972. And after all the amazing stuff that Dodge had brought to the market in the last 10 years, there was no way we were walking away from this fight. We wanted to crash that party, and we sure as hell weren't showing up like everybody else. We needed to do it the Dodge way, with patents, innovations, features, and performance that would literally reverberate through the entire industry. Our engineers needed to invent nothing short of the future of Dodge, the muscle of tomorrow. This is the EV that you didn't see coming, but you'll definitely hear it coming. Now that I agree with, Bucadalo. Yeah. Bring back the rampage. That would be dope. Guilty as Make it compete with the Maverick. That would be sick. I would totally be interested in seeing something like that. Also, nice. That uh, that looks sinister. Here we go. Charged. But we still have our rights. The right to remain loud. The right to be irrational. Okay, the, the right guy who wrote this copy really knows their audience. <laughs> We have the right to dodge convention. See what I did there? Yes, I do. And we have the God-given right to save the muscle car. So go ahead. Sentence us to life without reason and throw away the keys. We don't need keys. Where we're going. We have an on-off switch. <laughs> I do like their new old logo that they're using for the e-muscle stuff, though. It's dope. What? <laughs> okay. That's a sound. Huh. Oh boy. <laughs> you don't need keys. You need family. I'm trying my best to reserve judgment because, like, what were the engineering limitations of the sounds they could make? I'm really trying to figure out, like, they know that their target audience wants V8 burble. They want thunder, they want lightning, they want the cracks, the pops, the bombastic, you know, shit. This sounds like... 
and it has like a rasp up at the top. It's very alien. Filters a V6 or a four cylinder. Sound. It's very weird hybridized synthetic. It's so strange. <laughs> Nobody's passing out for the 12 liters of fuel it would have burned in that time. Oh man. I, I'm not even going to say that I don't like it because it's interesting. The problem is it it does sound very synthetic and kind of I don't know. It, it's it's it feels thin. I thought there would be more depth, but it's hard to do that when you're like projecting it out with like a what a symposer or a speaker or something. I don't know exactly what they're doing to create the sound, but I'm sure they're going to tell us cuz that's got to be one of the defining features of this thing. <laughs> the proportions of it, though, are what's throwing me. Because the hood is long-ish, but it's not as long as I thought it would have been. Okay, so like, this roof line, they're clearly calling back to, obviously, the late 60s, early 70s Dodge Charger. Like, that's the body style that they're going for. They really want to capture that, that muscular, you know, squared off hips, chiseled kind of look and stuff, which is great. And the first thing, I'm guessing this is definitely not ready for production. This has got to be a concept. But it's one, probably one of those concepts where they're like, yes, all of this powertrain stuff will be used in the final product. It's, yeah, it's center lock wheels. Okay, yeah, no, that, that screams concept to me. The biggest part that screams concept to me, though, is the fact that this is a coupe, that this has two doors. Because looking at that roof line and looking at just the general way it's put together... This feels like somebody dug through the garbage can of the old concept cars at Dodge. They pulled up what their their <laughs> Charger concept was from like the early 2000s or the mid 2000s. What was that really, really actually badass one that they had? They had these lines, like a lot of these lines. But they took two doors off it. But if I look it up, was it 2002? Yeah, this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was definitely this thing. You look at the rear and the roof line, and you tell me that's not directly inspiring what we see here. I mean, come on. That is 1,000% something they were pulling for. Now, granted, if you squint, you can see the charger that we eventually got in, like, 05, in the side profile, in the, the window, the way the greenhouse is shaped, kind of. But that is absolutely, absolutely where they're pulling from uh, in terms of design on this one, to have that, that chiseled look. I mean, it's very... I, and I'll say this, like, out of all the companies making concept cars in the 90s and the 2000s, like, anything Mopar was the shit. They made some of the coolest concepts out of any company. Whether you like them or not, they were trying. They were swinging for the fences, and it was cool uh, virtually every time, even when it was insane, even when it was kind of ugly, it was still cool. And, yeah, no, if I were to say what concept cars defined, you know, decades, Mopar, like, between Chrysler and Dodge and even Plymouth and, and them, they dominated the concept space in the 90s and the early 2000s. But yeah, no, they're definitely pulling from that rough line. <laughs> Can I copy your homework? Yeah, no, I think we're all kind of having a similar uh, reaction here. But yeah, that's, that is fascinating. So yeah, that's what we find ourselves looking at here. But what I'm seeing is, okay, like... Lexus IS style, there's eventually really going to be a door back here to match up with this window that continues beyond the door because the roof line continues so levelly after the the end of the cut line on the door. It's like they already designed it with the rear doors in mind. They just didn't put them on there in the concept because people are going to be mad that the Challenger's going away, so they're like, well, 
let's, you know, be careful about this. So they kind of compromised. They, they took a little challenger, a little charger, and they just went, bloop, and they mixed them together, and this is what you get. But I'm not fully upset. Now, I heard a rumor that this thing is supposed to be a hatchback, and if that's true, I like this thing way more. Like, if it has a liftback or something, that would be badass. And I would suddenly be interested. <clears throat> that looks good from the front. And that pass-through is interesting. This is the Charger Daytona SRT Banshee. We just keep throwing names at it. People like it. And because it's a Dodge Bev, it will be an assault and battery on convention. Oh, God, groan. Like I said when we started, it was a very simple formula. Look like a Dodge, sound like a Dodge, and drive like a Dodge. The first challenge was to make a muscle car aerodynamic. Now, lucky for us... We did this over 50 years ago, so successfully, in fact, that we were banned from racing. The original Charger Daytona was led. Let's be real, though. That works on people who don't pay attention. But if we're reading between the lines, the aerodynamics of what they're almost definitely going to show us, because I can see the nose cone there, any Charger Daytona or Super B, they were intentionally making it more slippery from the front, yes, but the wing creates drag on purpose, which is the last thing you want to be doing with an EV, unless you just, you know, hate range. Legendary for the way it pushed air around its nose cone and through its tail. This Daytona will be legendary for the R-wing pass-through that you see here. Now, those of you in the know... Now, don't get me wrong. If I was going to choose an EV in my mind right now, like a cool retro-themed EV... There's a handful available, not that many really, but in terms of concepts, if it was between this and the Vision 74 concept that Hyundai put out, I gotta go with the Vision 74. That shit was wild. That was like a dream. That was something I would have drawn when I was a, a kid or even a teenager. Just absolutely adore that car. That is so cool. This, though, from a practical consideration... I think we're looking at all-wheel drive in the EV sense, i.e. you have some sort of you know power operating at both axles, or there are no axles here probably, so you know all the wheels are powered. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. And for those who don't know what the Vision 74 concept is, beast your concept. What's a concept? Oh well. Envision 74. My God, this was the coolest goddamn thing I've seen in so long. I was absolutely in love with this. It was just sick. Absolutely sick. I love that shit. Like, it's the only car I've seen come out in a very long time that would make me go, yeah, I would sell the Jag tomorrow and the van and other stuff just to be able to get one of these and somehow make it my only car like i would i would find a way to do it because holy shit that thing is cool but uh that's enough about that let's keep watching let's hear what they have to say probably already spotted the fratsog logo up front that's a clue that we're doing something that only dodge can do and our patent lawyers will remind you all of that <laughs> now, lawyer jokes that, it looks really cool, right? And the tie back to the Daytona NASCAR is great, but does it actually work? Is this the slipperiest car in the world? Nope. And that's okay. We don't. Uh, Roush, I know it annoys you, but it really looks like a cross between a DeLorean and a 240SX. No, it, it doesn't annoy me when somebody says that. I just, it, I promise I'm not like making a dig at you. It just comes from a place of ignorance, but also understanding where. Giorgetto Gigiaro, who I always struggle to pronounce his name, um, basically he designed the original pony concept that was, you know, offered to Hyundai, and they didn't take it up on it. So that was the core interest in making the Vision 74 concept 
1974 concept, so hence the callback. But what happened was that design, after it was rejected by Hyundai initially back in the 70s, Jajaro kind of worked on it some more. And, of course, anybody who knows what Jajaro does, he has a fascination with wedge cars. I know that because I had an SVX. I loved that car, and he designed that car, too. But when it came to the DeLorean DMC-12, which is the actual model, DeLorean being the brand, um, but what everybody knows it as because it was the only car of theirs that ever got made, um, <clears throat> that design was stemmed from the original Pony concept. It was just after he reworked it a few times. So yeah, I, the reason I like that car is because it does incorporate some of the DeLorean DMC-12. It also mixes in like Mitsubishi Starion, Chrysler Conquest a little bit. A lot of those cars from the 80s in particular, 70s were kind of ahead of their time, but in the 80s, oftentimes had that kind of like basket handle style B pillar where it would carry across and then there'd be a hatch behind. I mean, the the FB and FC RX-7 had that as well. Um, but yeah, or a 240 has that, but yeah, no, it's that kind of thing. So yes, there is a new DeLorean, um, in my opinion, in name only, um, which does not make half as good of a DeLorean as the Vision 74 concept does. Honestly, they, they knocked that shit out of the park so hard it's insane. The DeLorean that's being teased and, well, shown now, that has the actual name, it has some inspiration from the design, like, oh, it's got going doors, but it's very round. So if you're somebody who likes a DeLorean because you like the hard edge shape of it, that's not going to be a car that's going to really capture the imagination the way the original did. Because, I don't know about you, but while I love curvy cars like my Jag, I'm a big fan of wedge cars like hard edge wedge cars the bmw m1 or you know any of the 80s 90s lamborghinis from the Countach, diablo etc yeah big fan of those shapes so yeah obviously there's a lot of Giorgetto influence there too anyway back onto this thing I don't care we're willing to give up some range to look badass Roush, did you know the Starion was originally called the Stallion? That feels like the beginning of a racist joke, and yet somehow I feel like that could be true. But it's a huge leap forward from where we are today. Or an AW11 MR2, yeah. Concept, so I can't share with you the exact, num the exact numbers, but to put it into context, think of the aero drag of the 1930s. hope that hood vent trains. No, like that hood vent you're seeing on there? I don't know if you can tell, but on this charger concept ev thing that hole in the top of the hood that's like enormous like, like supercar huge actually goes through and through the grill that the logo that's in the middle the badge that's in the middle of the grill is actually just like a little pylon just a little upright that connects the top and bottom parts of the grill which i'm doing grill in air quotes because that's actually just a giant gaping hole there it just passes straight through and that's one of the things they're talking about for aero on this. 34 airflow. This was the industry's first aero car. Then fast forward nearly 100 years to today's car, the wide body charger. The aero of today's car is 25% better than that car. Our target for this Daytona is to improve another 25% from today's car. That's 100 years of aero progress in a single generation. Not bad and still badass. Next, it had to sound like a Dodge. The Charger Daytona isn't just gonna be remembered because of the looks. It's gonna be remembered because it's been amplified by its patented sound chamber. Mm. While other EVs are focused sound on chamber. quiet, we amplified ours. Thanks to the patented Fratsonic chambered exhaust, the output is gonna be as visceral as those that came before it. Okay, but like they're calling it an exhaust, but in the <clears throat> the literal sense of what an exhaust does, do we think it's actually an exhaust or is it just like a sound symposer kind of thing that matches up with what I'm guessing happens is somewhere through a series of tubes, you you have like the actual electric motor noise that happens maybe around the hub or something. And then there's something that picks up on that sound. It gets passed through some kind of like, I don't know, compressor, whatever kind of electronic, you know, 
something to create a synthetic sound using a real sound, kind of like the stuff they they would use to pump in the sound in like I don't know the Focus RS or some BMWs from the late 2010s, that kind of stuff. But this is like a really, 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 really advanced version of one of those. Um, it's interesting. But then again, I wouldn't put it past Dodge. I, that that feels like the kind of thing. Like yes, that was one of the most important key attributes that this car had to have in order for them to accept it as being a Dodge. Because they know their audience, and their audience would not accept that. It's a JBL speaker tucked under the bumper. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's Bluetooth. Sometimes the connection ain't so good. How loud is that? That's Hellcat loud? That's Tower Flyby Spiller. Hold up. Oh, how loud? 126 decibels of output. How loud is that? <laughs> Whoa, That's Hellcat okay. Loud? That's tower fly by spill your coffee loud. <laughs> that this is that exhaust guarantees that Dodge will never go quietly. I oh don't my care god, if it's an EV, <laughs> if it's a Dodge, it needs a loud pedal. And the Charger Daytona has the first one ever. I mean, it sounds like a pissed off vacuum cleaner, but okay. But what you really want to know is can the Daytona do more? You know, than I appreciate them for trying and wake up your neighbors. Can it perform like a true muscle car? I can't be that mad because at least they're doing something different than the others. Credit where credit's due. What I want to know is, can they change that sound? Can they do something different? Or is it because it's a real sound that's been amplified and filtered and adjusted 10 million different ways? You can't really change it. I figure you can modulate it like a, a voice changer type situation to sound different. But you probably get some like weird digital artifacting and stuff. I don't know. There, there's a certain art to that particular science. But I have to believe that they could, they could do better than that. I don't want to say better. Somebody thought it was good, but I believe they can do better than that with something. It'll just take the aftermarket. Maybe people will go nuts. They'll figure out how to crack the code on that thing. Next thing you know, you're going to have farting Dodge Chargers racing you down the road. It's going to be a weird time. But the visceral experience of a muscle car is more than that. It's more chainsaw than it is cordless drill. So we made sure that the driving experience will be marked with familiar Dodge attributes. I know, Dan, that's exactly what it is. You think it's a step towards understanding the emotive aspects of driving. Yes. <clears throat> when it comes to driving, the number one complaint everybody who's an ice car fan has regarding EVs is the lack of emotion, character, feel, whatever they want to say. They're like, yeah, sure, uh, EVs are fast. But then after you press the on-off switch of a, you know, accelerator pedal a few times, it's exciting in that way. But then you just start to feel sick because there's like no other audio cues to go along with it. You want to have more than just wind noise. I mean, in a luxury car, sure, EV makes perfect sense. EVs will make for the absolute best luxury cars. I don't doubt that. But when it comes to a performance car, something that's got to kind of stir the soul a little, you know, you want to have something that's at least approximating gear changes so you're not just running up like a CVT. And you want to have some kind of noise. You want to be able to feel the difference. And yeah, you're, you're effectively dumbing down something that could be more advanced, but it's in the name of emotion. So I think that that has actual value to at least a, a percentage of people out there. Is it enough that they make money off of it? Well, we'll see. But I think it'll help get people in the door, sort of a, like a halo car effect, but it's more of a halo effect. The typical single speed transmission in a BEV, super efficient. But we know that part of what makes a Dodge a Dodge is the way our power throws your shoulders into the seat back at shift points. So our engineers. I'm sorry, did they say shift points? E <laughs> it is a oh, multi speed wait. transmission oh. with an electromechanical shifting. So they were listening to me. Experience that's pure Dodge. How unique? Yeah, that's also patented. At every opportunity, we use this new tech to make a muscle car a better muscle car. Now, you're all going to ask me, so I'm going to get it out of the way. What about the power? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you that yet. But what I can tell you is it will share another very familiar Dodge exclusive. 
direct connection. Hmm. The Charger Daytona will launch with three power levels all the way up to the 800 volt Banshee system. Oh God, you're right. People will be pranking each other, putting porn star moaning noises into their exhaust <laughs> on their cars. That'll be interesting. Now, granted, I was going to say, there's a lot of people out there who fear EVs for a different reason in that they feel like, well, if the car's a giant computer, yes, you'll be able to tune a lot of different attributes, but there won't be as much of a point to the traditional aftermarket tuning you might think of, or, oh, I can't change parts and make it faster and stuff. I mean, if this thing has something amounting to a transmission of some sort, I can't imagine there's going to be a lot of aftermarket switchable options for like drag race and stuff maybe down the road but it's interesting to see what'll happen to the aftermarket when it comes to evs because a lot of this stuff is probably going to be proprietary to the cars themselves it's going to be hard to change things without a humongous expense involved i'm just really curious what they're going to do when it comes to the aftermarket but i don't know what do you think we're also developing nine power levels through hmm. direct connection. You're gonna have nine total power levels on this car. And all of those power levels will come standard with- Yeah, okay. I'm still looking at the- Total power levels on this I car. I see the rough line. And it's this rough line. It just still looks awkward to me. What's going on with the- It's because of where the, the rear wheel arch is in relation to the C pillar, or I guess I could say B pillar, since the area where a B pillar would normally be, it looks like there's no B pillar there, which is interesting. Or if it is, it's very thin. Um, yeah, that's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, big old right to repair kerfuffle in the making. Yeah, I'm really curious what's going to happen with that when people want to work on their own cars. And the thing's a giant goddamn computer. You're going to have people having to pull the right to repair thing because... If you can't get that stuff protected, then I, I don't know. That's going to be a weird world. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> no, that uh, that friggin' roof line, though, man. I, yeah, it's just a little awkward looking. Exactly. Yeah, it's awkward in that rear quarter. It, it's just the way that the the shape terminates. I like the look of a big, thick C pillar. It looks cool. It does look cool, but it's the way it's meeting up with the rear of the car where it has a lot of space, but it still has this weird stubby short, you know, uh, a trunk like area back here. I haven't seen them open it up, so I don't know if it actually has a hatch yet or not. If it does. That's rad. But based on the shape, it's hard to tell. I, I don't see a shut line necessarily. But yeah, it's the combination of the weird long overhang underneath in the rear, but then it's like short on top on the rear. And that C pillar. There's just some weirdness going on. Yeah. All of those power levels will come stand up front. I have no complaints. I think that they did a really good job with that. However, it definitely looks like somebody just took a Challenger, added some of the early 2000s Dodge Charger concept car lines to it, and, you know, put it through a wind tunnel and then called that a day. The rear is where things are a little strange. But it's just in relation to how those hips meet up with the roof line, the greenhouse. If not for that, I, I do think it's actually pretty cool. Standard with our exclusive power shot push to pass system. Direct connection is also going to allow our drivers to unlock the features <laughs> that they want. <laughs> the people like just sitting in the car mode, awkwardly. <laughs> drift mode, drag mode, and yep, even a donut mode. <laughs> and finally, remember where I started. Probably forgot already. No one wants cars because everyone is now used to the and demands the utility and all-weather capability of a UV. Our designers and engineers raised the bar there Grand as well. Grand Prix Aero Coupe, the yeah. Daytona is adaptable on the inside as well. The combination of the massive rear hatch. Oh, there it is! Holy shit! Seats, yep. Make this Dodge EV play more okay. like a Dodge UV. Okay. Okay. All-wheel drive that has not just all-weather capability. <sighs> But increases I might have to put this one on the list then. Never thought I'd say that, but... Here's the facts. Hmm. We didn't ask for the rules to change. Crazy power, all-wheel drive, huge-ass hatchback where the rear seats fold flat? Is this really going to be the do-it-all car? Because that makes it a lot more appealing. 
but this is only the concept, so I don't know. <sighs> Until I see an actual production destined, destined version of this, I'm not going to put it on the list, but it's it's circling the list. It's in a it's in a holdout pattern. It's just in a flyover kind of deal in a holding pattern until it'll land on the list, but we won't know until they actually commit to you know, whatever this ends up being. And I will judge accordingly when I see what that one looks like. This is interesting though. Um Ukadala, no, I'm not still getting a Rivian that <laughs> I had to give that up when I decided to get this house. Basically, my proceeds from the, the truck I won had to go one way or the other. And while I didn't think I could necessarily afford a nicer house or, or something that I'd be interested in that was better than what I was already in, which was a very simple house, um, I ended up finding this really awesome place here in town, and I don't regret it one bit. I, I love this house, but yeah, it meant also Rivian uh, R1T was no longer in the cards for me. So yeah, I'm holding out until there's something along the way. I will say one car that even before I know the stats is on my short list of cars that I'm very interested in pursuing in the future is the uh, <clears throat> the, the Hyundai Ioniq 5N which they haven't shown yet. They haven't like actually shown what it'll look like. But educated guess, it looks like the Ionic 5, which I love, in an N form, so it's going to look a little more aggressive or whatever. But I hear it's supposed to have close to somewhere between 550 and 600 horsepower, and it's all-wheel drive. And it kind of looks like a weird uh retro future cyberpunk version of a Lancia Delta Integrale which I am all about. So, yeah, I'm very much interested in that. I once again wouldn't see myself necessarily, you know, dropping coin on a Hyundai as like my top car in my garage, but for an Ionic 5N I would strongly consider it. But it's hard to give up, you know, the fun noises that Jag makes, you know, because of the boom boom and the dinosaur juice. But uh, at some point, I think there will come a time where, yeah, maybe I gravitate towards an AV as my, like, high-performance, do-it-all cool car. And then maybe I just pick up, like, an old, I don't know, an Alfa Romeo Spider, a Fiat 124, an MG, B, um, Triumph Spitfire, something along those lines as just, like, a fun, simple super analog car i think that'd be a fun way to balance it out so yeah that's kind of what my brain stew is telling me the future might hold but you know things change so looking at this i'm seeing a potentially awesome family car right there potentially um who knows we didn't want them to change but they did and we can try to outrun them but that would be a nine second pass straight into extinction Somebody or, had fun with these we graphics. We did. Read their rules, study their rules, find their gray areas, then unleash the banshee. Now, find the loopholes and exploit them. Trust me, this is not the EV that they want. And yes, Dan, I was dancing around the topic of the Miata, but of course Miata would be my number one choice if I could find another NA that wasn't priced to the goddamn moon. I was realized I was very loud, but... It upsets me how much a uh, first-generation Miata, a.k.a. the pop-up headlights, a.k.a. the NA, values have gone up since I sold mine. Feel cheated. You to have. This is the way Dodge does EVs. Thank you. America, it's time to make some trouble. Step one, stir it up. Now, of course he's got a flag hanging out the window. Very Dodge. It just sounds like he's taking a really, really theatrical shit. Make sure you pick a fresh color. You, my friend, have good taste. Let's throw in some hornets for good measure. Now we're cooking with gas. Or are we cooking with electric? Right. Why not both? And now for the main course. Plug it in. Charge it up. Burn to perfection. 
It's so cheesy, but I kind of love it. Drive, put your foot down and never ever left. And that's how you make some trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold for press photography. How many people are going to never lift this thing right into a telephone pole or a turn signal pole while doing some kind of takeover shit? How soon before that happens? This is the awkward part at the end where nobody's quite sure. Can he walk up to the car yet? <laughs> Coming to a sideshow near you. Can't wait. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. So that's fun. I developed my list of... Let's look. Playlists. Library. I created a new playlist called Dane's Reaction Farm. This is where I will post videos that I feel like sharing and watching there. Yeah. Oh, new Mustang crowd pleaser. Um, I don't know about crowd pleaser. Mustangs tend not to uh, like crowds very much, but I get what you're going for there. And it's good news to hear that the ND Miata, the fourth gen, is still very analog. I like the sound of that. I know some people were afraid when the NC came around that they were just going to keep ballooning up, but the ND took it a step backwards a little bit, and aesthetically, I like them. I just don't know if I can necessarily afford one as a extra car if I'm throwing down coin on something like, you know, anything EV these days. Everything EV is so expensive, at least the ones that you want, right? But, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and pull up some of these videos that you were sharing there. Um, there was a video that Alex was sharing, said it was only 10 seconds long, so I want to find it. I love that bring back the Rampage joke. That would be awesome. Uh, here's a fun 10 second clip from back when I first bought the Subaru in February. Okay, let's watch it. If it'll load. This is fine. <laughs> oh no. We're good. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel that. I definitely feel that. <laughs> oh no. I enjoy Love Island ironically. I know it's it's definitely one of those things where it's like, no, it's a terrible show. Yes, it's a terrible show, but I enjoy it in its terribleness, and I realize I don't look like the target demographic for that show, but there's something so sadistically fun about watching people who are probably never told no regularly in their lives, and they're all forced to compete with each other. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Um, yeah, so everything these days is so, so expensive. Well, it's, yeah, that's inflation hitting and everything else at the same time. Not a great time, but let's see. That one's 18 minutes. These are all... Uncle Roger, but I don't know who Uncle Roger is. I haven't watched any of these, so I have no idea. My God, they have a lot of views, so. Wow. So we've got some food react. Oh, my God. Scariest ghost encounter. Why does this feel like some Jamie bait? You know what? I don't feel like scaring myself shitless, but it's only five minutes long. What do you say we give it a shot? You want to watch that? <laughs> What, what, Alex, what are you, or, or Dan, what are you mad about? Uncle Roger is my father. <laughs> oh my God. No, I have no idea what Uncle Roger is. I seriously have never watched any of those videos. I don't know who that guy is. I don't know any of that stuff. Totally new information to me. You gotta remember, YouTube's a big world. And just because you find yourself like invested in something, it could very well be a case where you're like, oh, everybody knows. I don't know. And I feel like I know a lot when it comes to things that go on on the internet, but I'm out of that loop, man. I'm out of that loop. Well, apparently there's multiple Uncle Roger fans, so I feel like that's it. Drop the ghost fits for Jane. All right. I'm not looking forward to being scared because I hate being scared. I don't enjoy that. I will probably whimper or jump out of my seat, but that's that's what you guys want. Uh, your old streamer here is going to give it a shot. Uh, just don't be surprised if you hear me yelp or make a weird sound that I normally wouldn't. 
Okay, here we go. Ugh. Anything, anything. Come on, please, anything. Okay, it's a mug. No, I'm not being funny, people. I'm going. I'm going. Word Vault has just come up. That is in the name. As in the name. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but look, it's come up with chat. I'm not going to sit here. I have things thrown at me. If you're there, please show yourself. It's thrown at me! <laughs> okay. Okay, because I'm going to tell you right now, there is no... What? We're going. Yeah, I was gonna say, okay. Stretcher moving by itself. I was gonna say, or it's windy, but those branches don't appear to be moving, so. Hmm. More importantly, though, why is a stretcher just sitting outside like that? Like that. But then again, at this point, it could still be pretty much anything. Oh. Oh, in the pub. Can't blame it on being drunk, though, because a security camera can't get drunk. Ferrari Press, what's this? That's some weirdness. Oh my god, I thought that was Colonel Sanders there on the bottom, but looks like a weird mixture of Buddy Holly and Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Get the fuck out! <laughs> okay, it's a garage door opening, but... What? What? you could say he was mugged. Oh my god. Security cams weird me out for this exact reason videos like this. Okay, so we got some ghostly brooming going on. Although somebody could have just stood up. Okay, no, I don't like these. No, thank you. This is some paranormal activity shit. Nope. Do not like. Do not want. Door's gonna open and the covers are gonna move and uh, <laughs> uh Yeah. But also, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this one kind of feels staged, like somebody's probably got some fishing wire just off to the side. I'm not convinced, but I'm not looking for a ghost to come and convince me either. So, hey, you know what? Do you do you, boo? <laughs> See what I did there? Mm-mm. Lol, nope. You say mysteriously, I just say he put too much weight in his wrist on it. Come on! Ghost of Dead Bride. No, thank you. I'm good. You can stay there. That's cool. Don't... Don't bother. Just just stay where you are. Okay, what the... No, oh, and they have a person cross the screen and acts as a wipe. Ghost on a plane? Oh, we don't need that. Sound doesn't help either. I like that you booed me, though. That feels good. Thank you. <laughs> nah. Nah. Not doing it. No. Nah. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. Don't want it. I don't want it. 
No. 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 Stop. No. Oh, God. No. 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 Were all those terribly convincing? Not really. I mean, it's the Daily Mail. They're probably going to pick some, like, stage ones just for fun. But, ah, yeah. still not my thing. Nope, not even a little bit. Okay, so we have this Uncle Roger guy, and apparently there's this perfect egg fried rice. Is this what you guys want me to watch? I love how the reasonable thing to do would be to turn your high beams on, and they didn't do that. Yeah, right? Get these motherfucking snakes off this motherfucking train! <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what happens when Luke and G share a room. Yeah, right? Okay. For the next 12 minutes, I'm gonna watch whatever this is. No fancy studio kitchen. No Christmas light. This is how you make perfect egg fried rice. I mean, I this do love egg fried rice. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Niece and nephew, Skillshare is all creating uh, this only yeah, yeah, yeah. play and roasting Jamie Oliver. Uncle Roger, always looking to improve my YouTube skill. That's why I go on Skillshare and I take this MKPHD. Oh, he review phone. You make yes, I know, Marcus major. Brownlee, so yes. Uncle description. We'll get $3 <laughs> a month, 10 And now we start Weejo. Today, we go. we're gonna review Chef Wang, aka Wang Gang, home style egg fried rice with spring onion. Chef Wang is a famous lovely. Chinese chef. His Weijo will be in Mandarin, but Uncle Roger, good uncle, will put subtitle for you. Don't be pussy. Learn to read. <laughs> Leftover cold rice for fried rice. Good start. Uncle Roger liked this video already. Chef Wang cooking for his uncle. But you don't even need to. Also, notice I'm doing the polite thing you should always do with a YouTuber if you even feel like you have an inkling that you might like their content. Click like on the video. It's the right thing to do, it's a nice thing to do. Fuck the algorithm because dang. That stuff is a pain in the butt when you're a creator. So every little bit helps. Please click like when you like a video. That's my not so subtle way of saying during my day job, if you watch some of the videos that we put out at my day job, you're not clicking like on those, please consider and then do it. So tell me this is uncle, because everything about this guy scream Chinese uncle. Uncle Roger like his fashion. Maybe I should wear wife beater like him. Hmm. Yeah, no, I could definitely tell the accent's fake because he's playing up a stereotype for, for dumb people. It's the, the way to do it. Okay, if this video get 100... But also for the smart people who want to feel like they're above the fray and they are in on the joke. 100,000 like Uncle Roger will wear orange sleeveless shirt. Good Just guys. Like Hurting your thumbs? Tony's clicking that like. Do it. Smash like it. Now. Hey, just like you said. Chili. Good. So now I realize I'm reacting to a React streamer, or rather a React video artist. So this is, yeah, we're getting meta with it. His egg cracking technique so smooth. Tap, crack, and throw all in one fluid motion. Chef Wang have more talent in one hand than Jamie Oliver have in his whole body. And his uncle just standing there looking. Not impressed at all. Typical Asian uncle. He break egg like how ex-wife Auntie Helen break Uncle Roger heart. Make it look so effortless. I mean, he's treating that egg like Justin Pate treats rap, so I get it. Mm, it's chopping quite smooth also. Ah, that another Asian uncle behavior. Asian uncle like me, we are so competitive about spice eating. Always try to be better at eating spice than other people. That what oh no, I judge people who do that immediately. I'm like, oh great, we got a one-upper in the room, cool. Why he say this not spicy? Nothing ever too <laughs> spicy for Uncle Roger, except Nigella Lawson. 
Can I gel is alright. Chopping good again. But my only experience involving her is that I, I watched for like a couple episodes that reality TV show called The Taste, which I only watched because Anthony Bourdain was on it. And I'm a huge Anthony Bourdain fan. Yes, I know. R.I.P. But huge fan of that guy. And uh, yeah, no. No, I'm sad. I like this Chef Wang guy. He's saying to his uncle, in hotel, if I make this, I make this dish pity. But now I cooking at home, I don't give shit. You should be grateful for whatever I make you. <laughs> this Chef Wang so sassy. And I like that though. Seriously, I don't give a shit what it looks like if it tastes as good as it can possibly taste. Presentation only matters to me, when you're trying to impress, you know, an audience who have no context for you or anything you do, that's fine. But when you're amongst friends, you're amongst family, then it's okay to, you know, be a little messy with it, a little sloppy. Uncle Roger just noticed why his uncle looked like villain from Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> Another great movie. <laughs> Aww, yeah, I definitely would have sliced Wang my so finger nice. off at this point. He's chopping extra spring onion because his uncle like it. Nephew Nigel. Huh? See, he treat his <laughs> uncle so nice. Auntie Helen took Uncle Roger children. And I treat you like my son. Why you don't show any respect? Hiya. Uh, but I film every video for you. You just wee joke guy who say you can mic yourself up. <laughs> Or a special friend, gotta get that food pretty. I, I agree, I'm with you on that. I think that's all right. But that's what I was saying. If you're like, you know, trying to impress somebody, makes sense, perfectly fine, totally understandable. But for everybody else, you just wanna eat the goddamn thing. Uncle Roger excited because they are gonna cook in outdoor kitchen. Fuyo! Niece and nephew. Uncle Roger explained this before, but yeah, I'm Asia, subscribing to his channel already. Kitchen, I am enjoying this. And outdoor kitchen. Indoor kitchen just for show, useless. We used to <laughs> chop melon and make cereal. Outdoor kitchen is where the magic happened. Fuyo. Because outdoor <laughs> kitchen, you can make as big fire as you want. You won't burn your house down. In Asia, you cook in outdoor kitchen. You know good food coming. In UK, you cook in outdoor kitchen. You get arrested for trespassing. I put my wok <laughs> in my neighbor backyard because he not even using it. And I get arrested. <laughs> Aiyah. And Chef Wang, he got two walk. He a walk fuck boy. Look at Just the movement like on Gordon. that thing. Okay, he's seasoning the wok, coating it with oil. Now fresh oil go in. Good. Egg go in. Good, good. I'm already hungry, damn it, I already it's ate. The only time I see Chef Wang Uncle smiling. <laughs> Apparently seeing people Man fight has a soul it after all. so much joy. Try and tell fragrant, I bet it's already fragrant. How do you know? That's a fragrant violation. Fuyo, that egg flipped so smooth. Let watch again, let watch again. Damn. This guy make his egg look like it dancing. Oh yeah. Oh, another thing, niece and nephew might have noticed. Chef Wang let this water run constantly. Maybe niece and nephew thinking, why he wasting water? His uncle kitchen, no water meter, is it? Is that why his uncle always looks so grumpy? Because his <laughs> nephew wasting water. If you think that, you are wrong. Because when cooking, you need cold water to cook. This water pot so cold. Wait, for real, Dan? That's interesting. Is that just like one of those weird myths or is that actually a thing? Because, huh, fascinating. When, when did those laws date back to? Because I, I want to know, is it like from medieval eras or is it my more recent development? Huh, okay, today I learned. Close yeah, to not like the U.S. where <laughs> trespassing violations are 
pretty strict, although usually they wind up getting fought in court, but yeah. Fire. If no fresh water come in, water will start to boil, everything evaporate, and then dry pot start to burn. Then Chef Wang uncle will beat him up with the bamboo stick behind him. That why he let the water run. He don't want to get hit. Green and red chili go in. Good. Good. And now the rice go in. Fuyo, good tossing! And this to prevent clumping of the rice. Hmm, good technique, good technique. Fuyo, Uncle Roger can watch his tossing every day. This guy know what he doing. I wonder if Chef Wang is single because he seems so confident in his right hand. Sorry, children. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. Even through the music in there. If you know the music, then you know. I like how his uncle just standing there gawking at the fire rice. That's exactly how uncle- But let's re be real. He's probably focused so much on his culinary skills that everything else has fallen by the wayside and his only relationship is with his kitchen utensils. Paul Roger flirt with woman. Oh dear. <gasps> is that- Is that what I think it is? Is that sugar MSG or salt? Fuyo. Oh, it says MSG. Here time we go. To use Jamie Oliver's favorite word. Yeah. yeah. And soy yeah, sauce yeah. go in. Okay. Fuyo, look at that graceful splash. Form a circle. It was very nice. It was a semicircle. It didn't go and the full round, but pretty close. Everything correct? Oh, is that There's Uncle a Roger's sea chicken? Chicken just in wandering the around. Back. Brown. I or like his uncle house. Got chicken on floor you can use for cooking. And got bamboo stick back there used for beating nephew. Everything <laughs> you need is on the ground. <laughs> oh, looks so nice. Fuyo, look at that. Oh my technique. god, that looks so good. Usually, normal chef will just scoop rice up from wok. But this chef Wang, he wok toss the rice into ladle. Fuyo, this is so graceful. He like dancer, like dancer. All this tossing and he don't drop single grain of rice. Uncle Roger's so impressed. Damn. <laughs> And he mentioned Wok Hei also. <gasps> this guy know everything. He like a god of egg fried rice. The biggest joy in life is seeing first child get born <laughs> and Chef Wang making egg fried rice. <laughs> yeah, no more food vids like Jamie's saying because I think it's just making us hungry again. <laughs> I need to check out the original Uncle Roger video. Well, we gotta we gotta mix things up. However, if you send me a link to the original Uncle Roger video, we'll watch it after something that we watch next. How's that sound? Mm, so happy. I hope they do taste tests. Nice to meet. Oh, there we go. Ah, that his Auntie Helen. Moment of truth. If you want to know if his fire rice good, let's just see what his uncle think. Because we all know middle-aged uncle. Don't bullshit you. <laughs> oh, he's smiling. He's smiling. That how you know his egg fire rice amazing. He impressed his grumpy kung fu hustle uncle. <laughs> What of wisdom? <laughs> what of wisdom? This egg fried rice, perfect. perfect. 10 out of 10. Uncle Roger approved. He is Uncle Wang Gang now. This guy is king of Wok Hei. 
and king of wasting his uncle water. Hope I get to eat at your restaurant one day. What I like to is his cooking, so simple. Nothing fancy. I think British chef need to learn from him. No fancy studio kitchen. No Christmas light, just good technique, good basic. It go to show all you need is passion for food and creepy uncle standing next to you. This is how you make perfect egg fried rice. His sweet joke will Thank you. That was wonderful. Okay. Apparently Uncle Roger's EFR video. So the original video. Okay. I'm not going to watch that next, but we're going to watch that. Drain it. Watch that in a setup for later. Okay. Do we like this video? Oh, that's the freaking Love Island one. I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I'll probably laugh at it. Let's be real. I'll probably laugh at it because that's the kind of show it is. But yeah let's see got these what do i have on my dane's reaction farm list uh, okay we've got some car reviews we've got truck pulling fail we've got oh wait a second we got a linus tech tips about dash cams realize i'm gonna put some people asleep but oh wait a second nope we were watching the button last week and i was really enjoying that but Jubilee and Cut have some other shows that I wanted to check out. So I pulled up this one, where it's blind dating six glow-up guys. So apparently this girl's going to go on some dates with some guys where maybe she only sees, like, the picture of them before they had their glow-up. So, like, maybe, like, a kid picture, and then that's the only reference she has. And then they end up being like, oh, wow, they're they're so much more than their looks or what? I don't know. I'm curious to watch it. So why don't we check that out? Old. I'm a graduate student at the University of Southern California. I'm a concert photographer and a journalist. I think a glow up is not only appearance, but definitely affect inside as well. I know for me, it was- Honestly, like, even if you're the same person, your personality can definitely change based on the confidence level and stuff, based on how you feel like you present to the world. So people can seem like completely different people, even if they look like, oh, I recognize that person from- school or whatever but they, they may be like a completely different person when you uh see them later so i'm wondering if that's kind of what this is you yeah, let's see it was more about confidence and how i felt about myself you kind of are able to recognize that in other people that have gone through that experience i'm hoping to see some embarrassing photos that i can relate to a little bit if a date came out of this i wouldn't be upset about it <laughs> Oh yeah, those are some good this photos. Is so funny. I'm really enjoying myself. Um, love the dog, love the chihuahua. So cute. This bowl cut. Is that a bowl cut? Okay, sad part, you're looking at that photo, you can be fairly certain that that dog's not alive anymore. I don't know. That that was everything. I see that a lot actually on here. Um, let's see, contestant two. Good Justin Bieber swoop. Oh boy. I like that we get two options here. That's nice. We have a tank top and we have a t-shirt. It's like a little modeling portfolio. Oh, the braces. I always wanted braces. Oof. I'm actually really jealous. As a kid, I begged for them. I never had them. And I don't know, because everybody else had them. It was one of those things. Is this Madame Tussauds Wax Museum? <laughs> I like I like the fists up. Oh, I just realized it's a layered shirt. That was so in. It was like that and like the skater. The oh no, skater the layered shoes. shirts. Oh that God, I remember 2008, that. 2009, I can picture it. Oh, this is so zoomed in. All oh, the glasses. Again, one of those things that like, I'm no. No, like this kid was in a group photo and they just cropped in on his face. That's all they had. Oh, the poor little guy. I mean, you guys probably feel insecure about it now, but I also really wanted glasses as a kid. I like this smile. Just barely there. These are, I'm, thanks guys for letting me view these. I feel very privileged. Boy. Um, let's see. Okay, unfortunately I'm eliminating number three. Um, I love the charisma, but the headphones give me that you probably listen to EDM now, and that's a little concerning. But he could have changed so much since that photo. I don't know. Oh my gosh, you're so cool. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet nice you. Reggie with one G. Okay. Oh, you 
don't. Yeah, you don't look like. Hi. What? Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. <laughs> no, I don't listen to you. Either. Oh, you don't. Yeah, you don't look like it now. Yeah. Can you give me a little backstory behind the picture? Uh, this is where I first came to uh, the United States. Oh, I was from the Philippines. From... Yeah. Oh, that's so sick. I was like, I was like, thirteen. <laughs> it was nice meeting nice you. To meet you. Yeah. Um, contestant number one, can I get a little... There's kind of bordering on almost having a mullet starting to form back there. Backstory. Which seems to be coming back into style now. Behind the picture, like the glow stick, the dog. How old were you? Well, I think this is about sixth grade. <laughs> uh, that's my dog. His name is Rad. Anu Kadalo, I haven't watched yeah, Curious Cars, so if you want to share one, one feel free. My sister was telling me that I should grow up my hair to look like one of those cool surfer boys. <laughs> it kind of just grew into that. <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> That's so cool you're from Hawaii. I lived there for a year. But yeah, I definitely I definitely see what you were doing with the surfer. That was definitely in at the time, and especially in Hawaii, I'm sure. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, contestant number two, how old were you in this picture? I want to say high school, freshman year. In which ways have you grown up? You know, back in the day, we all rocked the beaver cut before it was oh, a beaver Oh yeah, cut. for so, sure. Course, that was like the de facto haircut. <laughs> Yeah, I was already out of school when the beaver cut was a thing. Like, it was all Ashton Kutcher hair and shit when I was in school. But yeah, obviously, a lot has changed since then. I don't rock pink, and I have a different haircut, so. <laughs> Contestant number four, was this like an eighth grade picture? That's the vibe it's giving me. <laughs> yeah, eighth grade. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was in my Greg Effley era, for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> all I cared about was just World of Warcraft, so. Um, oh. Yeah, that's, you can probably tell. There we go. Need them oh puka my shells. God, my brothers used to play that for like eight hours a day in middle school. Eight hours? That's it? <laughs> I just sensed it from the picture. I knew. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you sensed it from the picture. Yeah, knew. Real recognize real. <laughs> <laughs> How have you grown up? Um, I started caring about girls, so. <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah, I started going to the gym, hmm. started uh, trying to care about my hair, started going on Depop. Yeah, the trifecta. <laughs> Is this <laughs> Sylvester Stallone? Were you a big fan of his? I was actually. Uh, I'm originally from Philadelphia, so yeah. Oh, okay. uh, I definitely love the Rocky movies. Okay. How you think you've changed since this picture? I definitely lost the glasses. <laughs> that's that's a start. And uh, I, I used to be like really short, so I somewhat grew a little bit. Um, and the braids are gone. Um, number six. Um, how old were you in this picture? Twelve, I, I think, around middle school. Yeah, that was uh, my old passport picture. And it, <laughs> oh it barely no, expired. that was your passport picture? I thought it was just a photo where he was in a group photo and it just like zoomed in. Aww. Two years ago, so I was still traveling with that. So I definitely used to get some, some weird stares. My passport's <laughs> expired, but it expired two years ago. And I had a picture when I was 12 on it. Um, and the airport was like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what made you want to glow up? Did it happen naturally or did you put effort into it? Um, to be honest, it kind of just happened naturally. I don't wear glasses anymore. I definitely use contacts. Um, and then, yeah, just, just kind of taking pride in my appearance. You know, I don't have the same haircut anymore either. Puberty. Puberty is a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> Too true. I, like, don't even have any good reasons to eliminate everyone. These are all, like, pre-glow up. Um... Okay, unfortunately, I'm gonna eliminate contestant number two. Um, yeah, right? Like he says, grew a little bit, but the bro's probably six, nine. Yeah, no, I feel like he probably grew up a lot more and he's letting on. Although what's interesting is like, she kind of went a little, eh, when he said he didn't really change much, it just sort of happened to him, which indicates like, oh, okay, you're still kind of in that style. You didn't develop anything else. Like, which is fine if that's your thing, if you don't care about that kind of stuff, but... You kind of saw her react to that. Um, I gotta pee real quick, so I'm gonna keep this playing, but if anything happens, you guys let me know and I'll skip back to it. Just give me like 30 seconds to a minute, all right? I'm gonna keep it playing though, so BRB. I don't I don't know. I, I wonder if you kind of still have the same skatery style as you did in there. I'm excited to see though. Oh my gosh, Hello. you're so cool. Oh my God. Yeah, you can go over <laughs> here. Hi, nice to meet you. David, nice to meet you. Once I saw everyone, I was like, I knew it was game over. Everyone's really? super good looking out there, so whoever you choose. There's like no good, good reason, but you're so, like, that's like a 180. I mean, your hair's like so clean cut. I feel so like stylish. it was like a, a dime a dozen out there in high school. Everyone was like, that, no, that the was the look. And, I remember yeah. that. I'm going to eliminate contestant number five. <clears throat> I, I don't like action movies, like at all, <laughs> especially Rocky. 
That's like not even a good reason. That's all I have though. <laughs> Stop. It was at this moment that she knew she f***ed up. Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> so handsome. Thank you, I appreciate Victoria. it. How's it going? Nice yeah, to meet you. you. Errol, yeah, that's a cool okay. name. I love your style. Can I like you... yours. Thank nice. you so much. You're pretty, I like yeah. your smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was great meeting you. You too, you too. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry guys, you guys I drank like so a handsome. gallon of water today. So cool. I'm contestant number one. So you said you used to live in Hawaii. What brought you out to LA? Uh, yeah, I was, I was surrounded by water for about 19 years of my life. And I kind of got island fever. Um, so I went off to university, I uh, got my education. And so I've been all just traveling all over the world. Um, what's the best place you visited? I like Japan. Japan was really cool. It's fun. The food Dope. is amazing. Yeah, Japan is definitely on my bucket list. Oh, we should go. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Nice. Um, let's see, you said you play World of Warcraft. Do you s are you still a big gamer today? That's all you remember? Uh, yeah, no, I play, uh, <laughs> I, I dabble. Um. Hold up, Rocky Boy knocked out because she doesn't like action movies? Oh, no. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to necessarily continue that even fledgling relationship at that point unless you just plan on going to different movies all the time. But, hey, you know, find other interests. Um, I play League, but, like, I do cool people stuff, too. <laughs> I like no, I in. appreciate the game. Oh, Yoshi, that's a very good uh, pickup point there. Yeah, where she said <laughs> he was attractive. The other two, she just said they look cool. Yeah, there, there was definitely a distinct difference there. Gaming. I used to play Halo, and I've played League like a couple times in my life. Oh, for <laughs> real? Like Not it? League. Yeah. Bye. Um, you know, I'm, I'm some of that likes Boy, going bye. outside and like talking to other people more. So. <laughs> okay, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh God, his voice coupled with that picture though, it almost feels like maybe he didn't glow up at all. He still just looks like that. <laughs> I'm just saying like- <laughs> I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what that's like. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, you said this is a passport photo. Did you grow up traveling a lot? Yeah, my mom made it a point to kind of get me and my brother exposed to different cultures growing up or something I that's really, cool. really appreciated. What do you do now? What do you do for work? Are you a student? Uh, I graduated a couple of years ago in my undergrad degree in uh, kinesiology with an emphasis in physical therapy. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. How important is fitness? <laughs> to you? Um, nice call, I Alex. I about four days a week. It's not like super important in my life, but I do like to keep active. I walk everywhere because I don't have a car. You don't have a car in LA? Living in San Francisco, I didn't think I, I didn't need a that's car fair. there. That's fair. And then when I moved here, I was like, oh yeah, public transportation is just yeah, no, L.A. is a very car-centric city, and uh, anybody who's ever spent time on the 405 knows how much that blows. It's going to be like San Francisco. <laughs> it was not in the slightest, no. it's horrible. I don't have a car either, so, like, I totally feel you on, like, how... We can be carless together. How L.A., like just makes it so hard to to get anywhere without a car i think my oh no dan don't say it dan <laughs> contestant number one you mentioned fitness in your life i'm not looking to be a gym couple damn it alex i do love working out on my own but i don't know i see those people at the gym and it's not me oh hi <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So oh, oh, hi. hi. <laughs> I mean, my dog's still cute. Yeah. But, yeah it was a pleasure to meet you. you. Yeah. <laughs> he reminds me of some guys I know who are in bands. You know what? Like cool I don't bands. have a good reason for this. I think I'm going to eliminate contestant number six. There is no Ooh. good reason. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I really like that we're using the AOL instant messaging sound here. Hi, Hi. oh my gosh, you look so different. Yeah. Definitely. Nice to meet you. You weren't into the chunky glasses and the little, the little <laughs> hair stripes? Oh, you look so different. I regret this. We all went through it. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that she stuck with like the most I don't know, the, the nerdiest looking guy, even more than this guy, like the nerdiest, I, I got the strongest like tabletop gaming store vibes from this guy with the braces. You haven't even seen mine yet. Mine is far worse than any of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, it was great meeting you. Too. you. So we made our final selection. So we are going with Take the one you're most likely to find at a tabletop gaming store. Hi. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Victoria. Eli, nice, nice to meet you. 
I mean, to be fair, he looks nothing like his picture, but you can still see the vague semblance of his face in there. Just very different. So, okay. Yeah, no. This guy, this guy looks like he is probably spends more of his time in a, like a TikTok hype house than anything else. It's, it's the, the jewelry and shit. That was so sick. So you mentioned Depop, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that where you get all your stuff? Oh yeah. It's like pretty inexpensive. Yeah, so. definitely. Sustainable as well. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. do you like just go to Goodwill or is like- Just like a lot of like random secondhand stores. <laughs> Hey, thrifting is cool. I like thrifting. You find cool stuff there sometimes. I don't go a lot, but it's cool. It's fun. Well, nice meeting nice you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just text her. and see if it goes. She likes me. It points for a shirt, though, right? I mean, I can't be the only one who thinks he's got a fun shirt. And, I mean, I'll take the opportunity. I'll take my shot. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I knew. I, I had an intuition, a gut feeling. Should I flip it? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Wow, humble Aww. beginnings for sure. Ooh, 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 he like tried to choose a polite way of saying it, but it still came across a little harsh. <laughs> you look like I know, identical. I, That's how I, felt with the I see you, right? You like, definitely really, resonate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's but mixing your mic, really my guy? Like, what are you talking like about? You did. Stuff. It's right there. I see it. Do you sure. wanna, like, it's still very so clearly like, her, though. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah, let's, let's stuff. My phone's dead. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. What do you have in front of you? Now we're going to bring back all the guys so you can look at... <laughs> Number one glizzy gobbler alert. Oh, no. Uh, all right. So we've got that one. I'm going to go ahead and click like because that was that was a good, good quality little vid there. Uh, let's go ahead and watch. You guys were... This episode two CV. Okay, I'm gonna add that Yukadalo to my list. Okay. Here's cars, and we'll go to the original egg fried rice video, BBC Food. That is what you guys wanted to watch. Dan, a glizzy is a hot dog. <laughs> I'm gonna need bleach for me eyes. Yeah, you know, shit happens. Okay, there we go. <laughs> the Waffle House hibachi joke was solid. I love that. That was great. Okay. No, no, like literal hot dog, but I'm sure it initially started as a euphemism and then it just kind of evolved to mean both. It's intentionally like innuendo laden, so. Cars and <laughs> this, this, this. Yeah, I could do that all day long. <laughs> Drain it. Dra What's she doing? <laughs> What's she doing? Drain the. R oh my god! You're killing me, woman! Hiya! Drain the. R <laughs> she, the rice. She's draining rice with colon the high. Oh no. Hello, my name is Uncle Roger. Today I will react to a video sent to me by a fan. It's the BBC Good Food How to Make Egg Fire Rice video. What is BBC? Let me see. Is it like something dirty, like big? It's, it's the British Broadcasting. I don't remember. The, it, the C doesn't stand for corporation because it's actually like community TV, right? Although you have to pay a license fee. How does that work again? Black. Oh. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, it is corporation. Weird. Okay, for some reason I didn't think it meant corporation, although that felt like one of the obvious ones. I felt like it, it wasn't. We all did. There he goes with the sound effect again. Oh, the British Podcasting Corporation. Okay, okay. That BBC is okay. Uncle Roger, not into the other BBC. Let's play yes. the video. <laughs> <laughs> egg fried rice don't be afraid this is really simple it's cheap it's delicious really satisfying ice don't be afraid don't be afraid but why would i be afraid should i be afraid you told me not to be afraid i'm starting to think i should be afraid who afraid of egg fried rice is the most common dish everybody eat egg fried rice who afraid why are you afraid of egg fried rice wear your courage uncle roger scare ghost but you scare egg fried rice
failure. failure. <laughs> this is really simple, it's cheap, it's delicious, really satisfying, and it's like a takeaway, but you haven't paid eight quid for it. Who pay eight pounds for takeaway egg fried rice? My god, they think money go when, when was that video made? Because the exchange rate would have been, oof. Go on tree paying eight pounds for egg fried rice. I'm pretty sure when I get my egg fried rice, a panda, a chain. Ugh. Even if it's not that good, it definitely was not eight pounds. No. Hiya. So a lot of people get afraid of cooking. <laughs> Rush. Big block cheer me, God bless. Rice. But you can follow a really simple rule, which is for every one part rice you have, you need two parts water. It's as simple as that. Who? Why you measure water with cup? Just <laughs> use finger, finger. You put rice, put water until finger. First joint, first joint the finger. That's how you measure the water, not with British is tea it? cup. Hi, uh, <laughs> first step all wrong already. I am not confident this video is going to be good. But what about those of us with like weird length fingers? Enough rice for around two people. So now the rice- Or hitchhiker's thumbs. I mean, look at that angle. Rice is on. Wait, so you don't wash the rice? How you don't wash the rice, just cook the rice? Alex, I only have panda when it's like in a rush. If I want quality Chinese food, I'm not going to panda. There are much better places around here I could get that stuff at. For sure. Not the rice stinky like you. Where you learn how to make rice? Some white people cooking <laughs> school or something. So now the rice is on, it's time to crack on with the eggs. Oh, ha, ha, crack on. Oh, God. I see what... Also, if I've learned anything from Love Island, like, we understand the connotation of crack on, but like crack on in the hierarchy of like go and flirt and get laid and all that stuff crack on is actually like the more aggressive one or grafting and stuff like that there are less aggressive versions below but she just went right for the full crack on what you doing so punny like when a girl tells a guy on love island that she just wants to be friends the cracking on is over it is ceased so humorous. I dying laughing. I dead now. I've got a frying pan here. Get that onto a medium heat. And then just add a little bit of oil. Yes, thank God. I absolutely... God. <laughs> Panda is bargain basement Chinese food. I never said it was good. It's just the one I can get through a drive through So like on a lunch break or something, and you're like, oh, okay. But no, there are way better places you can go. I, I have some definite recommendations the next time any one of you guys are here back in Boise. Totally worth it. So let that heat up. So one. Okay. Egg and egg fire. I'm going to try and do this one handed. Oh, okay. Probably one of the oldest and best Chinese restaurants here in town is called Yen Ching. Really good. But there are other options too. Eat that. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. I give you that. Pretty impressive. Once it's on a simmer, you want to cook it for around 10 minutes. You know what I don't like? Uncle Roger don't like induction stove. You know, those stove with no fire. Uncle Roger need the fire. Who use induction stove? It's so lame, so not satisfying. You go camping, you set up campfire. You don't set up camp induction stove. <laughs> That's what you think, Uncle Roger. But now... Now, there's a lot of very wealthy, glamping white people who use induction stoves when they go camping because they can't be bothered with fire anymore, apparently. Oh, come everybody, come, come sit around this camp induction stove. Let's tell a story. Let's Dan, I understand from a practical perspective why induction stoves are the best stove because it's not hot to the touch for your bare hands and all that stuff. No chance of causing a fire. I get it. I totally get it. My hypothetical Rivian R1T would have had the camp kitchen eh, the way I optioned it. And yeah, yeah, the induction cooktop was in there too. McMarshmallow. Ten minutes. Wang your eggs in. Wang your... What? What did she say? <laughs> what did she say? Wang your eggs in. Wang your eggs in. Don't put wang anywhere near your egg fire rice. Don't wang any... Uh, Mod Hatter, I never tried Twin Dragon. 
Assuming it's not a Dragon D's nuts joke. Sleeping in kitchen, okay? That's how I got fired from Chinese restaurant. On to play. <laughs> Yoshi. <laughs> one side. Okay. Okay, rice. We are looking good. The rice not looking good. You lying to people. That looks like gruel. Just mush. People. So wet. Drain it. Drain. What's she doing? What you doing? Drain the r Oh my god! You're killing me! Well, Dan, in my household, I don't have an induction cooktop, but I do have just like, you know, an electric cooktop, which looks like an induction cooktop, except it, it's not, because you can burn yourself if you touch it, but, you know. A woman hire drain the r <laughs> It's so rice. bad! She's draining rice with coal and the high... How can you drain rice with colander? This is not pasta. <laughs> I've never seen anyone drain rice. If your rice too wet, you fucked up. Don't bring colander <laughs> into your rice cooking. Hiya. Get a nice rice cooker. Don't mess with saucepan like this lady here. Don't mess with colander. Oh. If your rice too wet, you recook the rice. No way to save wet rice. Has quite a lot of starch in it, which will make what it... The, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Uncle Roger so upset, I put my leg down from chair. Why are you running water through? <laughs> you ruining the rice first, you use colander. Dan, I don't know these things, okay? Also, it's on top of an oven. It's all one appliance, so, you know. You dry the rice and then you put water. Then why bother drying the rice? Who cook rice like this? <laughs> Psychos. How did this woman get on BBC food? They never asked Uncle Roger. Uncle Roger teach master class on making rice, but this woman calling on the rice, then water through the rice. This is oh and oh. Oh no. Uncle Roger sad now. <laughs> Not even one year. Me now, and then just add your garlic and ginger. Garlic, ginger. Okay, classic, classic Asian. Seasoning. Okay. This one, okay. And then you want to put all the other ingredients in. <laughs> Gotta be real with you. That does not look good. Rice? Oh, the sad, gloopy rice that <laughs> ran through Colin. The <laughs> egg. The spring onions. And okay, the peas. Okay. And then you just want to stir it all together and cook it through. For about three to five minutes. This look okay, but look too healthy. Wear your MSG. <laughs> you don't use MSG how to make good egg. Also, if it's the, the fried rice, I would expect it to look a lot less white at this point, but maybe that's where the cooking is just gonna handle it. Fried rice. This is just white people egg fried rice. MSG <laughs> is the, the king of flavor. If you sad in life, use MSG. If you happy in life, use MSG. Put MSG in everything. It'll turn it better. You just get a baby, put MSG on baby. You'll be better baby, smarter. <laughs> and that's done. Time to plate up. The colors okay, it's a are still little oh, more no, cold today. No, no, no. Uh, ah, you don't do that. You use metal to scrape your Right, saucepan. yeah, don't do that. Hiya, this is non-stick saucepan. Cannot use metal. Oh, no. Hiya, your, your parents never teach you. If I use metal on saucepan at home growing up, I will be this old. No more parents. Why are you often? <laughs> I use metal on saucepan. Mom don't want me anymore. Very few things <laughs> break Asian people heart. One is when your rice run out. Number two is when you scrape pan with metal spoon. <laughs> First, my wife leave me. Now you scrape pan with me. That's right, Jamie. You got to MSG the baby. Metal. Or MSG Da Baby. Okay, wow. Somebody's gonna go to a concert of his and try and throw MSG at him. Hi, yeah. Uh, Uncle Roger won a suicide. So delicious. I'm very <laughs> proud of myself. <laughs> Why are you pout on? Mon Hatter, if you injected MSG into your bloodstream, I don't know what would happen, but I'm guessing it's not good. Yourself, you. <sighs> but it is delicious. But if you're injecting it into your bloodstream, you're skipping the best part of the MSG, which is. Flavor. You messed up everything. You scrape saucepan <laughs> with metal. You dry the rice and wet the rice and. <laughs> You're just at a da baby concert, and all of a sudden you just have like <laughs> <coughs> shells. <coughs> excuse me, full of MSG, and you just hawk them at them, and you're like, all right, you throw it, 
Uncle Roger sends his regards. And then he dart off. And they don't know what the hell happened. You try to rest with colander. You don't use MSG. Why is this woman proud of herself? Egg fried rice, Uncle Roger know how to make egg fried rice, and Uncle Roger three year old. And this lady, I don't know, 34, making egg fried rice on induction hob. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> BBC Good Food, this is not good video. People use this video, make egg fried rice, and they think egg fried rice is disgusting. Not good for Chinese culture. BBC Good Food, next time you want to make egg fried rice video, ask Uncle Roger. Uncle Roger teach you proper technique, the Asian way. Follow me on Instagram. This is my Instagram, it's my nephew Nigel. Oh my God, for real? These videos led to a specific brand of MSG being marketed as Uncle Rogers? Wow. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is <coughs> Wow. Tickle of my throat. Um, hmm. Wow. Okay, so that was awful. Uh, now I'm going to finish up with an Uncle Roger video where he makes fun of a show that I enjoy, but I enjoy it ironically, so I'm probably going to agree with all the points he makes. Probably. Uncle Roger, always trying to find love. Don't get me wrong. Rice cooker is good, but Uncle Roger needs something less intimate. Today, we're gonna watch this show, Love Island, and see if Uncle Roger can pick up tip for dating. One of you must suck the toes of the other for 30 seconds. No. Oh, yeah, no, no, oh God. no, no, toe sucking on Kiwi. Please don't do it, please. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Skillshare, niece and nephew. Also, I'm trying to think. I vaguely remember that season. I don't think I particularly cared for that season either. They got their ups and downs. This more recent season was actually pretty good. But the first ones, if you go back, you go on like Hulu and you watch Love Island's like first two or three seasons, they're wild. Like they're so different from the stuff that comes after. Mostly because they hadn't quite figured out their formula yet. So they were like kind of allowing some stuff that they probably learned down the line wasn't such a great idea. Also, as time went on and more people saw the show and it became more popular, people became a lot more social media savvy. So they would avoid doing or saying things that they thought could hurt them later. Whereas those first couple of seasons, people were like, ah, who's going to watch this anyway? Like, yeah, it's on TV, but whatever. So they could just be their true like awful selves which you know is terrible but at the same time very entertaining skillshare is online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for curious people like you uncle roger very bad at taking photos see terrible terrible <laughs> that's why i take this course portrait photography shoot and edit instagram worthy shot with Oh my Jesse, god. You look like shit as well. You can take something. Yo, put away your nephew to click and start exploring your creativity today. Go, go click link, and now we start WeJo. The sun is shining. The sky Ooh, this I. Okay, so I'll just say up front my favorite part about the entire show Love Island is the narrator. I think his name is Ian Sterling. Dude, just like, yeah, he has some like horribly cheesy jokes, but my favorite stuff is where he like comes up with a really convoluted way of hinting at what's about to happen. And then it happens. And then you get the joke, the punchline of what he was saying. Like there's some really quality stuff like that. I doubt we'll see it here because oftentimes it works much better in context, but he's by far the best thing about the show. Island looks so nice. Crash, the Vellas are the complete makeover. They absolutely This villa look nice also. He's feeling foolish. The kitchen's still there that, and the that, 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 this kitchen. This kitchen <laughs> looks so useless. See? Induction stove cooking <laughs> on here so not satisfying. Use some real fire. How can you impress women if you don't use real fire? All the people will spend whole summer here and the winning couple take home 50,000 pound free. Oh, so much money. This is about time we said hello to the class of 2021. Hands up, who wants to be on the tail? What? What? What they wearing? Why are you just... Why you just wear that stock 
Stop, you wear too little. Stop, go back to jeep and take a t-shirt. Hiya, you showing too much. You trying to find boyfriend, not customer. You just starting and it's so dirty already. Three, two, five. It's three times. Okay. But this can't be this difficult. No, we need a man. man. We need a man. Oh, no. You don't need man. You need... Uh, excuse me. Internalized misogyny. <coughs> excuse me. Common sense. Champagne bottle also cannot open. <sighs> These people must not have anything worth celebrating in their life before. I'm Liberty, I'm 21, I'm a waitress and a marketing student from Birmingham. How can never be vegetarian? I, I remember I did I not enjoy this season. <laughs> I thought sausage. the people in it were, Ooh, ugh. Uncle Roger like nice big sausage also. I see this niece Liberty have good taste. She <coughs> like Lap Chong. Been to many Cantonese restaurants before. Okay, not bad. Not many people know this about me, but I've got nine eyes and an A star. Hi, yeah, nine A and A star. Why not all A star in Asia? Part, part of the joy of watching Love Island is also just learning like ridiculous British slang that they keep coming up with new stuff every year just to make it even more convoluted. I swear to God, there's new entries into their, their dictionary every single time. Asian family, you, you fail. Birmingham. I'm Kaz, I'm 26, and I'm a fashion blogger from Essex. I love sex. What'd she say? What she said? I love sex. No, no, no! Don't say that kind of thing on TV. Hiya, this show so dirty. <laughs> when I see guys that I really like, I just kind of give them the eye. The eye? What the eye stand for? Infection. <laughs> I distinctly remember in the intros on this particular season, they were really obsessed with using a robotic, like, repetitive movement arm to, like, swivel around the people as they're doing their little highlight reel of their bio. They were really trying there, but it was kind of annoying. What? What's she doing? Hiya, wear your seatbelt. You're gonna get stopped by police if you write like this. This girl don't know how car work. Wait, what? What? What's she wearing? What is this? Did a dog chew off half your swimsuit? Hiya. This kind of thing making all my nephew third leg standing up. Sorry, children. I'm Devon. Where are you guys from? I'm from Oxford. Oh, are you? Okay, yeah, I'm like. I'm from Oxford. Right down the other end. It's good. Hello. Yeah. yeah. It's by a beach, so you know. No fit men, though. Oh. Shame. Oh. This woman. I just remember Faye because her lips look like they were eventually going to take off and fly off her face. Why her lip look yep. like this? <laughs> look like two strip of bacon. Earlier, <laughs> Nice Liberty say. I like me. Nice big sausage. <laughs> nice Liberty. Don't need to get sausage from store. Just eat Nice Faye. Lip. Yes, I'm a good girlfriend. I'm buying you presents, I'm cooking you dinner. Actually, no, I don't do that. I don't actually really know what I do. I don't know what I bring to the table. I'm great in bed. <laughs> Being good in bed is not bad, but what about the other 23 hour, 58 minute of the day? Oh, Lordy. <laughs> you need to be about six foot or over. Bring me a bit of comedy. I'm someone that can control this. Control what? Those boobs look so thick, they're not going anywhere. I can't believe I'm here. This is crazy. I'm Let's just jump up to a whole other octave. Oh, nice to meet you. Sharon, nice I'm to meet you. Oh my god, you're Sharon? Yeah, I'm Shannon. Sharon and Sharon. Oh, okay. Hey, go. They both common name. No need to act so surprised. I want a nice. So, what's your type? That's all I, I could think too was, yeah, no. Also, okay, Uncle Roger stand a chance with this woman. Uncle Roger, so, so old. The only social media I'm on is Ouija Bot. Miss Shannon, hit me. Sorry, children. Excited uh, ladies, what more do you need? I'll tell you what more. What more? It's gotta be you. I like her, she dressed the most classy. <laughs> I believe she's also married to the narrator, so that's a thing. <clears throat> <laughs> Welcome to Love Island. Ah, oh, she the host. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She my favorite celebrity so far. You're my celebrity. <laughs> you all look absolutely 
incredible. But how are you? Oh, that must have been bullies in high school. Probably some mean girls in the bunch. Yeah, probably for sure. Um, <clears throat> this is one of my absolute favorite parts of the entire show, though, because it is. I mean, for the producers, it's intentional, but for everyone else, it feels like unintentional comedy because it is absolutely cringe, just cringe when they're they're bringing people out. And for the most part, you know, most of the guys are like, oh, yeah, I'm attractive, whatever. And then at least one girl likes them. OK, great. But the whole idea is that they're coming out and they're being like chosen. So they got to take a pick, and if they get rejected, oof, yeah, right there for everybody to see. Look at this, look at this. Nice Fei boob looks so fake. She make the grass look real. I and Dan, you're absolutely correct. Judging people's looks is obviously just another way that creates these, these pressures and stuff. Totally get it. It's low-hanging fruit. But at the same time, when you're you're dealing with people who frankly intentionally put themselves in these situations like they they know they're going to be seen like a lot of people going on to love island now like this is a very recent season they're going there because they know if nothing else even if they don't win they're going to gain some clout they're going to gain a fairly large following if they feel like they can make some moments on the show that will be memorable that they feel like people pick up on it's it's all marketing now Whereas the early seasons of the show were, like I was saying, they're wild, totally wild, totally different because the people felt like even though there's a million cameras in the house, they kind of felt like no one's watching. So they would just say and do awful shit. I think now they're going to introduce the men. Now when they say and do awful shit, it's because they know people are watching and they know someone's going to decide to like them for it, even if that's dumb. Jake, I'm 24 years old. I'm the water engineer, and I'm from. What is water? I'm a water engineer. engineer. Water don't need engineering. <clears throat> water, you just drink. I think he <laughs> just mean he plumber. Oh, I love my job. Yes, nowadays you don't see a young hairy Jack. His shirt too tight. Hi, yeah. Don't wear <laughs> shirt from primary school. If you can't afford new shirt, how can you afford woman? <laughs> I've been single now for about 15 years. His jeans so tight also. It look like legging. Don't shrink wrap your ball high. Uh, ball is like wine. They need to breathe. My type, all I ask for is blonde, blue eyes, little feet. I like sucking toes. He what? I like sucking toes. <laughs> Don't say that to people in public. Now the whole world know you like to suck this is what happened when your culture don't have bubble tea. Then you need to find something else to suck on. If you want unchewable, disgusting thing in your <laughs> mouth, why not try Jamie Oliver? <laughs> 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 you might find the nice little blonde seat I've been waiting for. Little white tea. Don't wait. Uh, and what with the tongue? Hi, yeah, so gross. Oh yeah, Flint would definitely now, disagree. Now every guy's gonna choose to pair up with a woman. And if the woman interested, she can step forward also. Please step forward. Oh, Miss nice Liberty, like him. At least he got Liberty, one. Why have you stepped forward for Jake? I think he's quite cheeky, which I quite like. But look at this guy. His skin more orange than Uncle Roger Polo. <laughs> Is he radioactive? <laughs> Did he just shower in Chernobyl? <laughs> hey, girls, you're right. I'm Aaron, I'm 24, I'm from London, and I work in high-end events. My flirt never fails, it's always I. Also, if you haven't figured it out by now, most of the people going on Love Island these days are usually like the kids of rich and or wealthy slash influential people, so even if they're not like directly tied into it, they all seem to live very charmed lives, and they may like dress it up with saying like, oh, I'm a such and such kind of person for whatever the job is but the reality is when you're looking at it you're like oh that just means your your uncle or somebody put you in a position at a company where you know you got to basically party every day okay contact, <laughs> strong eye contact and a smile girls often must why that winking so many guy winking now is this what dating in 2021 is is this what i need to do to become daddy roger <laughs> 
<laughs> when Uncle Roger dating, nobody wink like this. We just think you have lazy eye. I think I'm a good boyfriend. Obviously, you know, you have to ask my exes, but I... Correct. You have to ask my exes, but... Nephew Aaron, Uncle Roger feel the same. I feel I good husband. Just don't ask Auntie Helen. <laughs> Actually, don't ask Auntie Helen anything. Unless question is, why are you such a cheating bitch? <laughs> My name's Hugo, I'm 24, and I'm a PE teacher. Oh god, I remember Hugo. I, uh, PE teacher. That means yep. he's not good enough to be actual teacher. He's just teaching gym. Hugo? Yes. Who would you like to couple up with? Hmm. I would like to couple up with... 25, 25, I don't like this wipe. It always the guy choosing the woman. Why not the other way around? It feel a bit backward. This less like dating, more like auction. <laughs> hmm. Hi, I'm Toby. I'm 22. So the reason I keep checking my phone here is because Anthony is texting me. He uh, actually wants to play some Xbox with me, which I could actually stream from. If you guys feel so inclined, once I finish up this video, I might wrap up the stream here. It's been a good one so far. I really enjoyed what we've been watching tonight, but I may create a follow-up stream that happens not long after, maybe like 10 minutes or so, just get stuff set up. And uh, you can watch us travel the high seas as pirates and um, fail miserably. It might be, uh, you know, it's not for everybody, but it's kind of fun. And you'll hear Anthony and I banter back and forth, so that, that part's fun. So anyway, if you're interested in that, well, we can give that a shot after this stream is over, uh, which I might just end after this video. I'm from Essex and I'm a semi-pro footballer. <coughs> Semi-pro oh, footballer. footballer. Just like how Jamie Oliver, semi-pro chef. Never been in a relationship. <laughs> Girls, face to face. Oh, stop it. Ew. Again with the winking. This guy <laughs> need to shave his... I felt like there was way less winking bullshit and stuff in the most recent season. They they kind of pushed it on these uh, last week. Like, everything is very produced. His beard also. That looked like pubic hair. Okay, now they all couple up now. Sharon and Hugo, Kaz and Toby, Faye and Brad, and Shannon and Aaron. Oh, hi, everyone. Are you okay? Hi. How are you? How are you? Hi, yeah. Uh, they're black people, they're white people, they're even a Puerto Rican. But why no Asian? Why no Asian? Get one Asian guy on there, we need love also. They should have one Asian guy, he get with the black girl. Because last time Uncle Roger saw Asian and black people together, it was rush hour. <laughs> Uncle Roger's <laughs> For Kaz and Toby and Sharon and Hugo first. This is where they're gonna live. First, who's never seen a bed. <laughs> Hiya, they're going to expensive villa and they still have to have roommate. Hiya. <laughs> Ten people sleeping in one room? This last like Love Island, more like Love Refugee Camp. This is so nice. Dan, I'll, I'll totally play the car wash simulator if I can get more followers here on Twitch. I'm trying to get myself up to 50. That's the number I'm supposed to hit so that I could start doing like the Twitch affiliate thing, whatever that program is. I, I'm trying to get up to that point where I can kind of build this to become, you know, something fun that I'm doing on the regular, but also, like, actually be able to make it a solid part of my time. So, yeah, if I can get up to 50 people following me, apparently that's one of the thresholds I gotta, gotta get over, you know? So if I can do that, that'd be sweet. But uh, in the meantime... I'm going to go ahead and finish this video. We'll watch the rest of it, but then I'm going to go hop on, play some Sea of Thieves with Anthony, and y'all are welcome to join us. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that after this. Would TRC do a video on it? I bet we, we've had some, like, fun discussions about future videos we want to do for TRC, and, uh, yeah, like, some React content, some things, like, slightly out of what we currently do, just to try and spice it up a little, because... Lord knows we need to find a way to tap into the algorithm like every other detailing channel has managed to do. But, you know, we'll get there eventually, I hope. Anyway, time to finish this video. Then we'll go play some pirate games. Nice. Oh. This is so nice. How about yeah. you? What, what do you do? Fashion blogger. So what do you have to do? Like, just, hey, this is my YouTube channel. Oh, this is my yeah. YouTube do you channel. Know what? so bad. No. <laughs> Hi, uh, doing YouTube not this easy. This Puerto Rican guy insulting Uncle Roger Jock. Skip him. Right, guys, time for the first nighttime montage of the series. Oh, yeah! 
Yes. Unless Jason maybe. They're so excited about the bathroom. Why they all have same luggage? How they gonna know whose is whose at airport? Hi, uh, <laughs> so impractical. What? Alex, I've, I've been holding in Anthony's secret for such a long time here. I really hope you guys just harass him in the comments when we go live playing Sea of Thieves to get him to finally admit what uh, vehicle he may have gotten. I think it's good to read between the lines, but I will say personally, he'll deny it up and down. And you didn't hear this from me. I didn't say a word about it other than I'm very excited what, at what he got because it's one of the vehicles that I would have been interested in if I were like a Honda <clears throat> and Honda Jason vehicle person who was looking. It's probably something that would have been on my very short list. What's she doing? What's she doing? <laughs> Why she using mirror and then phone camera on her head? She live streaming her forehead. Who do that? This literally what? She FYI, the phones they use on the island don't work to the outside world. You can't reach anybody out there. They only work on a network within the 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 villa household. So like, you could send texts and pictures and stuff to other people in the villa, but they don't go outside. They can receive texts from the producers, but that's about it. What's she doing? I suppose the good thing about Alex, I'm afraid that would be actually too cool, and that would be on my list, but uh, no, it's not that. The early days is everyone can just kind of just crack on with... And yes, Dan, Xbox is my preferred platform. That's where I'm playing games and I'll be streaming with people. But I could try playing it on my Mac Studio if I thought I would run it. I think it can. I don't know, is there a Mac version of the detailing simulator? You let me know. Who the one? Who the want? Straight away, <clears> you know, like, <throat> especially your outfit, obviously, Jesus Christ, like, bit like, blue and with a tie. Well, if you keep going down the list of different Honda models and I keep denying them, you're eventually just going to figure out what it is. Also, I said Honda and Honda adjacent, so you do the math. It may not be a Honda, but it may be in the Honda orbit of, you know, Honda-associated brands and such. Hi, uh... These conversations, so boring. Personality for me is always personality. Look, you're never going to find out someone's personality if you're not attracted in the first place because usually you're not going to give them the time of day. Yeah. You're not, are you? No, Uncle Roger falling asleep. And then he talks himself in a circle and then I come out of the conversation a lot more confused than what I went into the conversation. Same, niece face, same. Up hitting it off mint. But... No, Dan, that would be a Toyota. <laughs> He did not get a Toyota. You start finding other things, and this. Why her face like this? No, Dan, not a red turbo Supra. That's a Toyota. Anthony wouldn't get that. All the time, she looked like she don't know how blinking work. Yes. There you go, Yoshi. That's thinking outside the box. <laughs> nice face. <laughs> blink sometime. Blinking is free. This is a whole madness of this. Oh, she actually blink. So how do you feel then? I'm feeling good. Oh, yeah. No, face face, as I recall in the season, was just pure comedy. She always had some weird look on her face and everything. Yeah, what's your usual type? Yeah. But as I said before, I didn't particularly care for this particular season. I was like, eh, lukewarm on it. But the most recent one, I actually really enjoyed. You haven't said it. I'm like really. I mean, I'm not. For I'm not funny, but like I don't really know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. And that's, that's not me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm struggling with Harden. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Most of the show is incredibly vapid, but it's fun watching pretty vapid people be vapid at each other and then wind up in dumb scenarios. I think he's amazing. Not just you, Nishan, and Uncle Roger struggling also. <laughs> <laughs> no. I feel quite that's boring. But, no, but I think, yeah, I'll just, like, take my time. This nephew Aaron is driest person. The crickets in the background are having a better conversation than these two. Uncle Roger, Aaron, no, he have more teeth than personality. Okay, now they're gonna do a few challenges. <laughs> I'm not doing that. On, I'm no. not doing what? that. One of you must suck the toes of the other for first. Oh seconds. no, that's right. I, uh, no, 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 no toe sucking on TV. You need to apologize to children. Please don't do it. <laughs> Please. 
Oh no. Please don't. Please. No. 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 Don't. Oh no. Hi. What dating show is this? This is not dating show. This more like weird fetish. Dan, a TSX wagon would have been a me move, except if I'm getting a wagon, it's either going to be rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. I, I'm i just not vibing with a front-wheel drive wagon. Ding! Uncle Roger's so upset, I put my leg down from chair. Niece Cass, you should put your leg down from chair also. Don't let the Puerto Rican suck your toe. And <laughs> nephew Jake with the foot fetish. I like sucking toes. Oh, dude. <laughs> He recorded. Oh god, no! Oh, I never picked up on that when I watched it. I didn't see his phone like up recording. Oh god. The Ouija. What you can do with it? <laughs> Saving it for later. Hi. Uh... That's my first time sucking toes, by the way. <laughs> if anyone wanted to know it. What did it taste like? <laughs> toes. <laughs> So far, this show, nothing happened. Alex, I can't get any more detailed for you guys. Something. He's gonna, gonna have to tell you himself. Drama. You and your partner must try. I appreciate you guys guessing, and and you have some fun guesses out there. But I, I seriously can't say it. Anthony will kill me. It wouldn't be fun. Like to stop your jaws dropping to the floor when you see who's heading into the villa. This is new <laughs> contender from Best. Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm 25. Yikes, the brow. Hi, and I'm a marketing specialist from Oxfordshire. But most of them are married or have girlfriends, so I mean, they're off limits. But they're not really off limits. <laughs> Ugh. I mean, I'm partial to a married man. Is she partial to married men? No. <laughs> Uncle Roger and Matt Hancock both stand a chance. <laughs> I'm a bit mushy. I do tend to absolutely fall in love. I just want someone fit and funny. It's not too much art for, is it? This woman looked like a hot scarecrow. Hey boys, how are you? Chloe here. I'd like to take you all on a date, but I'll let you guys decide who wants to come and join me. Hopefully I'll see you soon. You just started. <sighs> when Uncle Roger dating, it's so innocent. Just go get dinner, watch movie, holding hand. This not good dating instructional video for middle-aged Asian men like me. Hi, yeah. Uncle Roger not gonna do that weird winking tongue shit and then suck your toe. Rice cooker is good, but... All right. <clears throat> so, we've established now. Thank you for that. Uh, will I stream that? Well, I'm gonna go stream us playing sea of thieves that's coming right up after this but uh yeah let me make sure okay in the future i'll look up some more uncle rogers video i'm liking these i can see why you guys enjoy these but uh as it stands for now here on the channel i'll pop back to full screen we will put on the music that's right that means things are coming to a head i just realized how close this show is to cooking <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, there are cooking shows, and then there are cucking shows. That is quite loud. All right, so, that's in the background there. Well, to everybody who watched tonight, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I noticed the numbers jumped up and down a little bit there, so I may have seen some new faces in here. If uh, you are new, I hope that you follow so you know the next time I go live. Otherwise, i got to keep promoting it on Facebook and Instagram. Because I'm trying to build that audience, baby. I need those follows. So if you know anybody else who'd be interested in, you know, watching along with us and stuff, I find this to be pretty fun, and I hope you do too. So uh, yeah, that pretty much rounds me out, not for the whole night, but just for this, for this side of things. So uh, as you probably heard, unless you just got back to your computer or phone for some reason, I'm going to be going out into the entertainment room there, the living room, uh, and we're gonna play some Xbox Series X where I've got Sea of Thieves. I gotta fire that up. Anthony and I are gonna play. We'll probably have some chats. It'll probably be fun. So, uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me get them on there. We'll get it all set up, and as soon as I got it figured out, we'll invite you guys. All right. So, with that said, I hope you all have a wonderful evening if you're leaving for now, or if you're following along, just stay right here on the Great Dane Films Twitch channel, and you'll see it go live when I go live 
on my Xbox. So just give me like 10 minutes, 15 minutes max to figure it out. Then we'll do that. All right. I'll see ya.